besides President Hagainde promising the Zambian people cheap fertilizer, he actually put figures to it. Mm. He said, when I form government, fertilizer will reduce in price to 250 kwach. What is the price of fertilizer today? Four months after he made the promise, the price of fertilizer is even higher. What is even worse, and the gentleman from Ibex said he would like to know things, and this is an opportunity for me to explain to the Zambian people. When the PF left government, Ministry of Agriculture was buying fertilizer at a price of $1,000 per metric ton. $1,000 per metric ton. And President Hagainde said, this is very expensive. They are extorting money. They are sharing money from fertilizer. He promised the Zambian people, I'm going to reduce the price. What has he done? For the information of the viewers and the listeners, President Hagainde has increased the price of fertilizer. Instead of paying $1,000 per metric ton, President Hagainde has given a contract to somebody, $50 million contract, at what price? $1,407 per metric ton. And this is not fertilizer which was brought in the country now, in the last four months. This is fertilizer that was brought in the country during Edgar Chagwalungu's reign, which was supposed to have been sold to the Zambian government at $1,000. He is paying $1,400. Why? Zambians, ask the question, why? You promised that you reduce the price to 250, but you're making the government pay 40% more. Why? Who is paying? The poorest Zambian farmer, Babwadia, the one who called. He promised the Zambian people, he said, I'm going to make sure there is free education from nursery to tertiary. Today, how many children were given bursaries? 20% of all the ones who qualified. 2,000 only. All right? 2,000. Why? Now he's changing and he's saying, no, I didn't say that I'm going to provide free education. I said I'm going to have access to quality education. My heavens, are you saying things as though you think that Zambians are so myopic? Huh? That they have amnesia? That they forget? All these things are recorded. All these things are there. Huh? He told the Zambian people that he's going to reduce the price of fuel. I told you about that. Instead, he has increased it. Huh? What the Zambian people must do is prepare themselves starting now. The only thing I can say, and again, I don't want to annoy you, but the only thing I can say from the bottom of my heart is that President Hagainde managed to deceive the Zambian people. His victory was victory of deceit. The Minister of Finance has reacted to some of these concerns that um, you are raising, that some stakeholders have also been raising. He's indicated clearly that they are uh, raising a foundation, they're building a foundation that will uh, bring about prosperity in the country, putting up policies that might seem to be tougher now, but later on uh, barefoot. At what point did President Hagainde or any of his people, even Musokotwane, go to the Zambian people during the campaign and say, Zambians, we are going to increase prices of fuel because the economy is bad. We will increase the prices of fuel, we will not give bursaries to children because the economy is bad, we will make sure that you tighten your belts, you have one meal per day so that we can improve the economy in five years. Where did he say that? We are talking about what they said, what convinced Zambians to vote for them. This which is coming up now is just self-defense for failure. All right? They have just come to realize that they told a pack of lies. Now they must justify their lies. What would you say, Honorable Vinda, what would you say would be the best alternative in dealing with the issue of subsidies? Because um, we know how complex this might be. It is not even complex, my friend. Mm. This is a very simple matter. Read the PF manifesto. It answers these questions. Mm. I told you how we were going to address the issue of fuel prices. We are going to recapitalize in Deni so that we can produce fuel. Alright? Number two, as regards Millimil, we said that we are going to open the borders to export maize and Millimil. And from that we will earn 10% 
export duty. So that if we are earning that 10% export duty, where is that money going? That is the same money that we'll be using to subsidize the farmer. So that the farmer can produce more. All right? Electricity. And by the way, Zambians, I would like to inform you, we know for a fact that this 30% increase in fuel was just a marginal increase. The increase is yet coming. As soon as we are done with the elections in Kabwata, I can assure you, Haga Ende is going to increase the price of fuel more. Again. Again. Electricity, you heard what they are saying. We want to come up with cost-reflective tariffs. If you read the PF manifesto, do you know what we said? We said now that we are reaching the equilibrium on energy, we are managing to produce as much energy as we require to, to run our industry. We are now going to invest in Batoka to increase the production so that we do what? We export excess power. If we export excess power, we earn revenue. That revenue is what is going to subsidize the local market. That's what thinkers do. Thinkers don't go and punish their own people. Huh? Look, I can give you another example. We said we are going to charge mineral royalty tax. And you know that this year alone we earned $600 million from mineral royalty tax. What has Mr. Bali done? He has said we are going to make mineral royalty tax tax deductible. And Musoko Tuan in Parliament, I couldn't believe Minister of Finance going to Parliament and saying, no, we have not done away with mineral royalty tax. What we have done is just to make it tax deductible. What does it mean when you make a tax tax deductible? What it means, my dear friend, is that if this company, A, pays 100 million kwacha as mineral royalty tax, at the end of the year, if they make a profit, and on that profit, income tax is 200 million. What will you do? You will not collect the 200 million. All right? You will deduct the 100 million that was paid to the government as mineral royalty tax and only collect 100 million as income tax. What does that mean? Did you collect mineral royalty tax? No. Huh? You take with one hand and give with the other and you say, we're not removing mineral royalty tax. That's exactly what they have done. And in addition, this government, the first 100 days, when they are supposed to be celebrating, the first 100 days, they reduce corporate tax from 35% to 30%. Okay? Giving money to their friends. Because these guys are businessmen. Huh? The majority of the people in Bali's government are businessmen. They are giving themselves tax rebate, 5%. What about for you, a worker? They only increased your tax-free threshold from 4,000 to 4,500 kwacha. Isn't that and commendable? Commendable? Mm. I don't think that the workers out there will be happy with you. 12% increment for civil servants, not commendable. You increase 12% on their salaries and increase on their fuel by 30%. What have you done? What have you done? When we left government, Milimi was 150. Today, if you go in shops, Milimi was 175 kwacha. What is the 12%? Huh? You say we're giving now no PTA fees, no school fees. Fine, no school fees. But we're going to increase the cost of you taking your children to school because all of them have to drive to school. I heard Minister Musokotwane saying, no, this increase will not affect farmers. It will not affect people in villages. Are you sure? The people in villages, how do they plow? How do farmers plow if it's not with, with fuel? Are you sure that those villagers walk to hospitals? Their children learn in their village, in their house? No. What's your take? What's your take on, on, on the CDF allocation from 1.6 to 25.7? For me, that is just a smoke screen. It's actually abuse of members of parliament. Serious abuse. And again, it is because these people do not even understand the genesis of CDF. Hmm. CDF came about as a way of a private member's motion. Two members of parliament raised the issue of CDF and they were complaining that, look, President Chiluba, you have this slash fund which you are using to give to churches and so on. But for us, when we go to constituencies, people are also asking us and we don't have. All right? That's how the CDF came about. Now, you go and make a member of parliament 
also become the executive to start implementing projects. Huh? You heard what Musokotone was saying when they were winding up debate. Now you are going to the constituencies, you shall be followed with 25.7 million. So members of parliament, you now have to go and construct schools, you have to go and construct clinics, you have to go and give bursaries to pupils, and you have to replace the PTA funds. And Good heavens, if a member of parliament is going to become part of the executive, is going to execute projects, who is going to perform the oversight role? Who? Tell me, this member of parliament, Clement Tembo, incoming member of parliament for my constituency, when I see him on the street, what would I say to him? Clement Tembo, can you please make sure that that clinic is done? All right? And then he goes to that clinic and does a bad job of it. Then he goes to parliament and his ministry of health to be debated. Are you sure Clement Tembo will stand up and say, I am a member of parliament elected by the people of Kabwata and you minister of health, can you explain? Will he do that? He will be compromised because he was part and parcel of the decision to provide that clinic. There, there are committees, Honorable Minister, that, that are there, CDF committees. Last week I was having a conversation with the Minister of Water Development, Honorable Mike Mposha, who also indicated that these there are committees uh, at constituency level that have been constituted in various, various constituencies that will be spearheading these things. Of course, uh, a member of parliament is part of that committee. I was, I was Minister of Justice when we came up with a Constituency Development Fund Act. Mm. So I understand it very well. Mm. All right? I understand it very well. And at the time that we were coming up with that act, it was because the money that we're talking about was only 1.6 million, which was meant to be used as a complement. It was only a complement for small projects. Not for members of parliament to go and start constructing schools, for goodness sake. No. So it should have been maintained at the same. As a matter of fact, the members of parliament are now going to be even more impoverished. Because even the 1.6 million that they were getting... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say ka. Chi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking with you. <laughs> Even that 1.6 million which they were getting, mm. Huh? Mm. now will not be there at all. So the members of parliament really are now just going to be abused as far as I'm concerned. And I supported members of parliament in the patriotic front who said, please, we don't have capacity as members of parliament. What this government is doing is just to hoodwink people. All right? They are hoodwinking people. I can assure you that this coming year, they may be able to give the 25.7 million. Do you know why? Because from August up to date, they've stopped paying suppliers. This is the reason why you don't see people anymore spending money. Suppliers, contractors, and so on have not been paid because President Bali has said, accumulate money, keep it. So that I can make an impression, in January, I give CDF. It will happen in 2022. I can assure you it will not happen in 2023, because then they'll have understood how government treasury operates. You don't bank government money and keep it in a chibagi, and we'll spend it in January. No, government money goes in and goes out immediately, all right? Except for your foreign reserves. ZRA is collecting money. All right, to pay salaries, to pay all contractors, but they are holding on to it to try and impress in January. And by the way, I was very surprised talking about uh, these ideas of being deceitful. You tell the Zambian people, sorry, the reason why we're only giving bursaries to 20% is because we're using Edgar Lungu's budget. Whenever things go wrong, is Edgar Lungu. Even the things that Edgar Lungu did, if it's good, it's yours. How come you are being so hypocritical? Opening our airports, yes, beautiful airport, without saying credit to the PF. Huh? They shall get tired because the list of projects that we left for them to commission is a lot. And each time the commission will be clapping, well done, PF. These guys, the only job they have is just to go and commission, not to bring in anything new. How can a person say the money we're going to spend on loans to students is the 
2021 budget. Are you sure that now, as we're coming to December, there is money which is in the budget for 2021 which will be transferred into 2022? There's nothing like that. It is their budget which will finance those scholarships. It's them who planned wrong. Huh? And they want to try and hoodwink uh, Zambians. And they think that Zambians are so gullible. Mm. Huh? My friend, I, I, I talked to you about uh, all these strange economic policies that are coming about. President Hagainde, and I'm afraid I have to talk about him because he was the chief campaigner for himself. He was walking around with a spreadsheet, to showing you on television, spreadsheet. I have the formula, I have the formula. Zambians believed, hey, this man, ha, when he comes, Kuzankala formula, it will change the whole thing. He comes into State House, the formula is gone. Huh? The formula is lost. Instead, he's overtaxing Zambians. Look, besides the fuel price, you know that they have increased road tax? Yes? And that will not affect youths as far as Musokotwan is concerned. It won't affect villagers as far as Musokotwan is concerned. They have increased road tax. Huh? They have also increased presumptive tax on taxis by 11%. And as far as President Bali is concerned, he's bringing down the cost of living. To my surprise, big surprise, in a country where only 2% of the Zambians are insured, and all the property you see in Zambia, only about 2 or 3% is insured. Mm. Motor vehicles, if you go out, go to Ratsa and ask, most of the motor vehicles in Zambia are insured third party because of the law. People don't insure in Zambia. They don't. And we in the patriotic front were saying we must make sure that Zambians insure. That's how we came up with a crop insurance of 1%. To make sure that we protect people, this government has decided to increase levy on insurance premiums. We left it at 3%. They have increased it to 16%. So, my friend, if you're insuring your car and your premium on your third party was the only 500 kwacha, now, my friend, it is going to be 500 plus 16%, close to 660 kwacha. That's what is going to be the cost of insurance. Are you sure people will insure? Now, people will start buying premium on a daily basis. Huh? And when there are accidents, what will happen? Let's, is this a government that is living up to its word? No. Let's let, let, let's close. There are a lot of issues that we can talk about. Let's let's close before I bring in because I, I want also uh, Mr. Clement Tembo in a minute or so to just uh, speak to our viewers tonight. But before he comes through, very interesting matter of street vending. Uh, it, this has been a very interesting subject. Former President, uh, the late Michael Sata, attempted at some point to get rid of street vendings, uh, which never worked. The new dawn has made some directives to get rid of street vending. This hasn't been received well by members of uh, the public. I think this was expected. I think the question that is needed to be answered here is, what is the best strategy in dealing with with the issue of street vending. Zambians are starting to realize that it was a big mistake to vote out the PF. And a lot of people are saying we did not vote for UPND, we voted against PF. Huh? And it so happened that the only party that benefited from our voting against PF was UPND. Because a lot of people have come to realize that the PF doesn't even have an idea on how to govern. They don't. And over this matter of uh, street vendors, it is as though our friends live in utopia. Mm. They live in outer space. They don't live in Zambia. For those of us who live in Zambia, we know the hardships that those people on the streets are facing. Those people are on those, those streets not because they desire to be there. That's not the issue. There are other fundamental factors which this government is not capable of understanding. We tried, and you're right, President Michael Sata tried. You remember he was uh, saying, I'm jik, I'm in the case I'm kuchapa. Him he didn't hide. Even in the campaign, he said, I'll come and clean Zambia. I'll come and sweep the streets. He told street vendors. But once we were in government, he came to realize that, wait a minute, 
These people I want to kick out of the streets have families to take care of. All right? Something he didn't realize before. He didn't realize that before. And this is the beauty with a person like President Michael Chofiasat. All right? Once he was in government, he understood. And he quickly changed his position. He did not tell the people, I'll keep you here during the campaign to win his, their vote. No. That's what the kind of man he is. He's not deceitful. Huh? Deceitful people are the ones who tell people, yes, in the road shows, you will stay here. And then when they form government, they say, get out. Those are deceitful people. A person who tells you, Chiluba, remember? Chiluba, when he was going around campaigning, he was saying, Zambians, are you ready to sacrifice? And all of us were saying, yes. Remember? What about Bali? Bali was not telling people, are you coming to sacrifice? Bali was telling people, when I come, I am the panacea of all your problems. I shall solve all your problems. And people fell for that uh, deceit. But now his true colors are showing. He lives in utopia. He thinks that those people along the streets are making Lusaka dirty and they must be kicked out, they must be taken, I don't know where. Mm. The solution... Is to leave them there? The, no. Mm. The solution is what the PF had already started. You saw that huge millennium market. Right? Samamora? Yes. Mm. The Simon Mwewa Lane. Mm. Mm? Why were we building that? We were building that because we wanted our brothers and sisters to have a place where they can go and trade decently. You don't just wake up and say, come on, soldiers, remove these people. Where are they going? Where are you taking them to? So it's to create alternatives. You create them. alternatives. And the PF government, which is a pro-poor government, already started doing that. And I can assure you, in five years, 2026, when government comes back, PF comes back into power. You are all, coming back into power. I have no doubt in my mind. I have no doubt whatsoever. You think you are popular enough to come back? Watch the space. Just watch the space. Look at how formidable the Patriotic Front is. Remember what I said. People did not vote for UPND. People voted against the PF because of the various reasons I gave you at the beginning of this program. And we are determined to learn from our past. We are determined to become even better as a political party and as individuals in the political party. And because of our lessons, when we do come back in 2026, by the will of the people of Zambia, we will form an even stronger and better government. We will do things even better than we did in the last 10 years when we were in government. Honorable Binda, thank you so much for coming through on the last edition of the platform for the year 2021. You've been my last guest for this year on this platform. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for inviting me. I hope that uh, the people out there have learned a thing or two from our interaction. And uh, I have to say, if uh, the word car is not very nice on this television, uh, I'll learn. I'll not use it ever again uh, with anybody. Uh, I'll find a better way of expressing things like that. But in, on a serious note, thank you very much for hosting me on your last platform for the year. I look forward to your invitation in the new year. And as we part company, I would like to seize this opportunity to wish you and uh, Millennium uh, Television, Millennium Radio, and to wish all your viewers and your listeners a very prosperous 2022. I hope that all of us who, by the grace of God, be uh, allowed to enter 2022 happily. There are going to be challenges, but uh, the challenges are as a result of how we voted, unfortunately, and we hope that things can only get uh, get better and not worse. I also would like to wish uh, President uh, Bali, President Hagainde, and his team uh, prosperous 2022. We in the Patriotic Front are going to be a very responsible opposition. We will not oppose just because we want to oppose. Our members of parliament will not walk out of parliament just because they think they can walk out of parliament. We are going to give very effective checks and balances 
for the President of the Republic of Zambia so that he can deliver on his promises. We are also going to get all the articles that he was using to campaign so that we can remind him in case he has forgotten, so that he can deliver on his promise for the betterment of the Zambian people. Thank you very much for having me and thank you for allowing Clement Tembo to also come and uh, greet the people of Kabwata constituency.